What's up guys? Welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 24. For this episode, I play in my first WSOP event of the summer. Uh, the guys from 9to5poker.com put me into the Colossus, which is a $565 tournament on the agreement that I would be uh, giving away 10% of any of my potential winnings to one of their subscribers. So check out their site. It's a site where you can watch uh, all your favorite poker vlogs and other content that's poker related. So it should be pretty cool. Um, definitely take a look at it. Uh, I'm at my parents' house in Northern California. I'm up here for one of my friend's weddings and um, I've been pretty busy though. A lot of stuff going on. I've been working on the site Off The Felt, which is kind of a poker group or poker forum site where uh, people can share hands and poker strategy and we can talk about other poker related topics. It's just me and my brother working on it. So I'm really excited to get that launch. It should be up right now actually. Uh, by the time you're watching this. So um, check it out. I'm gonna be really, really involved and uh, I'll be giving my thoughts and analysis on hands that uh, you share. So let's go ahead and get into the episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's June 4th, about 9 a.m. I'm about to play the Colossus. I pre-registered, so I got my ticket right here and uh, just packing up some stuff because I'm gonna be gone all day. A few people kind of are curious about what I like to bring, so I'm gonna show you. First, I get out the backpack I've had since I was about 12, and then I'm going to bring this for uh, taking camera footage. I'm gonna bring some deodorant, because I'm gone for, you know, I, I never really know how long I'm gonna be gone. It could be 12 or more hours. I'm gonna bring this lucky amulet that uh, my buddy Marcus sent me. I'm gonna bring two phone chargers, uh, these are really important since I'm filming a lot of stuff and uh, listening to music. I'm going to bring a plug-in for a phone charger, a USB cord, and a hoodie because it gets to be pretty cold. It's pretty important to have some snacks, so I've got some Pop-Tarts, some Chewy Bars, Nutri-Grain Bars, some Goldfish that are definitely going to get smashed, and uh, a lot of water because you've uh, got to stay hydrated. And that's all going in here. And that's pretty much it for what I like to bring. See you, bye. Bye. Little after 9.30 here, just pulled into the Rio. This is my first tournament of the series so far. Pretty excited, uh, no real expectations. It's a tough event because you only start out with 5,000 5, in chips and blind started I think 2550, 30 minute levels. Pretty much just have to run good from start to finish basically. First tournament of the summer, it's level one. We started out with 5K in chips. The table looks good with no one that I recognize. There are only 18,000 entrants, so we're basically a lock to win. In the first interesting hand, we're on the button with 10 nine of clubs. The hijack opens to 150. I've seen him open a few times already. I decide I wanna play the hand and put in a three bet to 425. It folds back to him. He makes the call. We go heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace 10 deuce, my opponent checks, I put out a small C bet of 300. If he's got an ace, he's never folding to a larger bet anyway, so I don't need to bet too big here. Our opponent does fold and we take it down. Now it's level two, blinds are 50, 100. I look down at king four of hearts, not a great hand, but it's folded to me. I wanna get in the mix because the small blind and the big blind are the two weakest players at the table. I raise to 225. The button folds and both blinds call. We go three ways to the flop. The flop is ace jack nine with two spades and one heart. Both players check. It's a connected board with lots of draws and I'm up against two opponents. It's not necessarily the best situation to see bet, but I do have backdoor flush and straight draws. 
Neither opponent seemed too interested in the pot, and I'm the aggressor in position. I stick with my story that I have a strong hand, and I bet about half pot, and both players fold. Now it's level 3, with blinds at 75, 150, and a 25 chip ante. I look down at pocket 9s under the gun, and open to 375. The two players on my left both call. Now the cutoff, who had only shown down strong hands up to this point, raises to 1150. This is a tricky spot, I don't want to call with one fifth of my stack to set mine, and I don't want to risk my tournament life and shove into a tight player in a situation where if we get it in, I'm going to be flipping at best. I reluctantly fold, as do the two other players on my left, and the cutoff wins this one. Finally, we've got some live footage for a hand. I look down at pocket tens in the big blind. Under the gun plus one opens to 400. The button calls and I call for 250 more. We go three ways to the flop and it's eight, six, deuce with two hearts and one club. I check, the initial pre-flop raiser bets 600. The button folds. I have a hand I'm certainly not folding. I put in a raise to 1500. The opponent now goes into the tank and just calls. I've got about 3k left and my opponent has me covered. I pretty much think he has an overpair or a flush draw. There aren't too many good turns, but I don't have a lot of options now that I have less than a pot size bet left in my stack. The turn comes out, it's the nine of clubs. I still have an overpair and I've now picked up a gut shot to the straight. It's one of the best cards in the deck for me. I shove and my opponent tank calls. I figure I'm either crushed or a slight favorite. The player ends up turning over 8-7 of spades for a pair and an open-ended straight draw that I have blockers to. I'm in about the best situation I can be in. I just need to fade an 8, 5, or 10. The river is a jack, so we double up. Our stack is over 10k and we're in great shape. We're still in level 3 and now we have pocket 8s under the gun plus 1. The player under the gun limps in. Just like in a cash game, if I'm first or second in the pot, I almost never limp. So I raise here to 525. It folds back to the player under the gun who calls and the flop comes ace four deuce. The opponent checks, my hand has value but there aren't a lot of worse hands that can call a bet so I check back. The turn is a jack, the opponent checks again, I check. The river is a six, this time the player bets 650. Folding or calling is probably fine in this particular spot. It looks a lot like I have complete air once I check back twice. So he could be bluffing or betting for thin value. In this instance, I call. The opponent turns over ace-seven of hearts and wins with top pair. The very next hand, we get pocket nines under the gun and raise to 400. It folds to the button, who has been a little squirrely so far. He's been three betting a bit and has been caught bluffing. Anyway, he shoves for 4,900. Something doesn't quite feel right about the shove. I'm getting about 1.3 to 1 on a call, meaning that I need a little over 43% equity to call against his range. I folded earlier to a 3-bet with pocket 9s after opening from under the gun, but that was because I was up against a tight player and could have potentially risked my tournament life in that hand. Here I'm up against a much looser rec player who saw me fold to a 3-bet earlier, and if I call and lose, I'll still have around 25 big blinds. Let's look at a relatively tight range of hands he could be jamming with here. Against a range consisting of aces down to tens, ace king and ace queen, and one bluff hand like ace five suited, pocket nines has 39% equity which is very close but not quite the 43% we need to be at. I don't think he'd shove with aces or kings for fear of scaring me out of the pot and not getting maximum value. Who really knows though, but if we take those hands out, Nines has a 43.5% equity, plus I think he'd probably shove with some other hands that are worse than nines. It's a close decision in a bigger buy-in event when the levels are longer, I'd just look for a better spot. I'd fold nines, maybe tens, but probably call with jacks or better. In this event, the levels go by quickly, so it's extremely important to chip up, and to do that, sometimes you have to take risks. I make the call, and unfortunately, he flips over pocket jacks. The board runs out, it's all low cards, I didn't improve, and he takes it down. This was a play I definitely didn't have to make, especially since I had about 9.5k, which would have allowed me some maneuverability throughout the tournament, but I took a gamble early and paid the price. I didn't play any significant hands during level 4, I went on break with a stack of 3800, which was a bit of an accomplishment given the structure of the tournament, 
A few others at my table weren't quite so fortunate. After getting through a herd of people, I make my way outside and run into vlogger extraordinaire, Andrew Nimi. What are you doing? Just coming? Look at that guy. Famous. How's it going, guys? Famous poker player. Turn, turn you know, what professional you, where did you come from, man? You came from this direction over here. What's over there? I was doing some vlogging over there. This direction. <laughs> Way down there. Oh, okay. Sorry, In a few seconds, I meet some huge fans of the poker vlogs. Man, dude, I just had to say what's, what's up. What the fuck, I'm watching, man? I was I'm getting, watching it this morning. This is I'm bullshit. Dude, yeah. Oh, I didn't mean fans of my vlogs. I meant huge fans of Andrew's poker vlogs. They've uh, never seen mine, apparently. Awesome, man. It's like I'm not even here. It's like I'm not even here. Holy crap, dude, that's awesome. Hey, nice to meet you, man. This is my buddy Brad. I'm Brad. Brad, good to meet you. Did you watch the flight? Yeah, we're still in there. Dude, awesome, man. No one knows me. This is how it is when you're with this guy. Yeah, I got a question for you. Oh, let's go. Dude, help me shut me down last night. Can I ask you a question? Okay. All right. So, we're from Texas, bro. Once the break ended, we come back and blinds are 150, 300 with 50 annies. I've got about 12 big blinds, so I've got to make some moves. We look down at pocket eights, under the gun plus one, and open shove. We're not really hoping to get a call here. It folds around to the big blind. You can see it in his avatar's face that he has a tough decision to make. Fold, fold, fold. Yes! We get it through and increase our stack by almost a thousand. The very next hand, we have around 4,800 and look down at ace jack of hearts. It's another tough spot for me because I don't really want to open and have to fold to a three bet or get called and have to play short stacked out of position. I'm not going to be in great shape if I jam and get called most of the time either. Folding seems too nitty. Ultimately, I do jam. It folds to the button. This is the tight player who three bet earlier when I folded the pocket nines preflop. He tanks forever and then calls and flips over ace-king. I need a lot of help. The flop comes 9-4 deuce rainbow. The turn is the king of hearts, so I actually picked up a flush draw and a lot more outs. Unfortunately, the river is the deuce of diamonds, so I lose and I'm out of the tournament. I wasn't sure if it was mathematically correct to shove with the eights or the ace-jack of hearts, so I called my buddy Kevin after the tournament who is one of the best tournament players that I know, and he sent me a screenshot of his app, which shows what hands you're supposed to shove with, depending on stack size, position, and blinds. I'll get the name of the app as soon as possible, and I'll put a link in the description box below. It turns out, jamming with eights and ace jack of hearts from under the gun plus one and under the gun were both correct according to his program, but unfortunately it didn't work, and I was sent home. Just busted the tournament about three hands into level five. I open shipped with 3,800 with pocket eights from under the gun plus one. Blinds are 150, 300 with 50 annies. Um, so yeah, it folds through. So I uh, basically increased my stack by 25% there. The next hand I get ace jack of hearts and I open ship again from under the gun. Um, I have 15 big blinds and win about a thousand if it folds through and then if I get called um, a lot of times I'll be racing or hopefully so didn't mind your shoving but I got called by ace king so uh, flop was all a low cards and then the uh, turn was a king but it gave me a flush draw and the river was an offsuit deuce so I uh, ended up losing I'm out I'm not sure if I'm gonna play cash or if I'm gonna go home and take a nap and then watch the Warriors Cavs game with a few of my friends. That's it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Um, I actually played a cash game session at Bellagio after the Colossus. I went home, I took a nap, watched the Warriors game, and then uh, and then went to Bellagio and played some 510. I got into some super interesting situations and I got wrecked. So uh, you might want to check out that vlog. That's going to be a bonus vlog that I put together where I don't have the actual live footage, but I do recreate, recreate the hands with the Share My Pair app, and I go over it with my buddy Check Raise Charles. Um, 
I've got a lot of plans for the rest of the WSOP. I'm going to be going back to Vegas in a couple days and I'm going to play the Monster Stack and then I'm going to be playing the main event, which I'm super excited for. So I've been doing some studying, reading some books. I just found out that CrushedLivePoker.com has a, has a tournament site or a tournament section called Crushed Live Tournaments. And uh, there's a ton of videos and podcasts up by Jonathan Little, who's just one of the best players in the world right now. So it's awesome to get his insights. Um, so I've been checking that out and uh, you may want to check it out as well. I'll have a link down in the description box and check out offthevelt.com, which is the site I'm working on with my brother and uh, that should be up shortly. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you're all doing well and good luck at the tables. I don't want to blame anybody for why I'm not in this tournament anymore, but I mean, here are the facts. I go on break, I see Andrew coming in out of nowhere, said he was vlogging, doubt it, uh, unless vlogging is code for doing back alley drug deals behind the Rio, and uh, you know, I come back two or three hands into the fifth level, uh, I get stacked and I'm out. So. He clearly put some crazy vlog run bad voodoo on me. And also, how am I supposed to concentrate when those guys come up to him and they're like, Hey, Andrew, love your vlog, man. Big fan of your vlog. You do great stuff, dude. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, I'm like right next to him. No one recognized me. I'm videoing the whole thing. I look like a buffoon. No one knows why I'm videoing. I got better things to do than to just fucking <laughs> fangirl knee me all day and vlog his vlog basically plus uh you know he doubles up through my friend the other night bellagio and then talks about that like where does this guy get off you know um so like i said i don't want to blame anybody but it's andrew's fault it's all andrew nimi's fault it's all andrew's fault <laughs>